All right, folks. Uh, I sh even showed you the uh, uh, LoRa board, uh, the one that we have in our lab, which we were trying to experiment and trying to explain to you about the low power wide area network. Okay, but you may be wondering why should we ever anyone should ever study about LoRa, isn't it? I want to point you to an article which appeared in the IEEE Spectrum. Hmm. Uh, you see the connection to LoRa, but before you see the connection, see what is actually the problem and how things are actually panning out in the direction of LoRa. Okay. Here is an article in the IEEE Spectrum. He says, satellites can be surprisingly great option for IoT. I, for IoT networks that need to be cheap and low power, consider outer space. So, folks, where are we going? We are not looking at Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and uh, you know Zigbee and this kind of networks anymore. We are looking at wide area. Even wide area connectivity, we are not even looking at uh, terrestrial connections like uh, cellular connectivity and so on. We introduced LoRa which, which we said is also good because it is a terrestrial wide area up to 10 kilometers. We did that uh, link budget calculation and so on. But this article is telling you do not do any of this, you can go out of space, out of, out of this do not do it anywhere local to anything here. And here is the connection to uh, the whole uh, story that uh, we need to understand. This article says many people th think about uh, IOT just like connecting street lamps with uh, you know uh, traffic cameras and air quality sensors and uh, connected devices all this is all fine, but uh, what about uh, satellites why should you ever use satellites to connect any of these devices maybe really wondering right you may be wondering but the question really is that if you look at satellite based iot network you know it is gaining a lot of momentum and uh, the article clearly tells you that don't use satellite just because it's fancy don't use satellite just because it is there don't use satellite just because as an alternative to something else don't do that if you have very good terrestrial connectivity if you have very good internet connectivity for your home don't even think about satellite that is what this article is saying. It is much uh, better if you use whatever you have with you. Okay. But there are several situations where satellite connectivity for IoT becomes uh, an absolute requirement okay. and that is where he tells you about uh, he brings in two couple of uh, important things. Think about one example here he is talking about is tracking devices on a cargo container being shipped across the Pacific Ocean there is a huge cargo container on Pacific Ocean, there cannot be any terrestrial connection, there cannot be any Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, none of these things, no operator available on in the middle of the deep ocean, ocean that is not going to work. You still want to know where your container is when it is transiting across the Pacific Ocean, that is a good place. Put a LoRa device there, put some device there, put something which will allow you to connect to the satellite okay, directly not LoRa, but he is talking about sat any satellite connection in general okay. and uh, of course, you cannot talk about 5G and so on. The second reason why you may also want to go away from terrestrial although you are on land is because let us say a terrestrial connection in Europe from one end to the other let us say if it is 1000 kilometers connection uh, where your source and destination are situated in a terrestrial network it would not be from a single operator and it would not be from one country, it will be across countries and that is a pain if you want to have a service from one operator in one country to another operator in some other country that is going to be a difficult uh, proposition. In India may not be so much because in India it is a 1000 kilometers you are not even you perhaps uh, would not even have gone out of the state right depending on where you are in a fairly large uh, state like uh, let us say UP or even Karnataka for that matter uh, you may be uh, just about going out of the state that could be a problem. So, you cannot go on having uh, agreements from one uh, country to another country across operators and it is a total mess. Therefore, try, try to look for satellite connectivity that is the second reason he says uh, the, the article says that is a good thing for you to look up. Then he points us to a beautiful website called Swarm where you can take services of LoRa constellation. Folks LoRa has become so popular 
fantastic uh, connectivity that you can even reach out to low earth orbiting satellites. Low earth orbiting satellites which are a constellation of them can have LoRa receivers and you just need to buy your LoRa transmitter, LoRa uh, system a transmitter which is able to reach out to this low earth orbiting satellites and then you will be able to do a satellite communication. So, you do not need a satellite to based uh, modem and so on and so forth. You can use your standard IOT modem, uh, IOT LoRa device and simply upload the uh, uh, content onto the uh, satellite out there which essentially has a LoRa receiver there. So, this is essentially what Swarm is doing ok uses LoRa in its constellation and uh, Fraunhofer uh, engineers recent demonstration that could be beamed with a LEO, LEO means low earth orbiting satellite importantly showed that the IOT technique would not need uh, to be tweaked for it to work ok. It is very very simple quite straightforward. you can buy it in the market LoRa modem you do not need um, you know any special uh, satellite uh, transponders and so on. You just buy the LoRa modem put up a sufficiently good antenna beam it with suf sufficient amount of transmit power you are done you simply upload the data onto the onto a low earth orbiting uh, satellite. So, essentially for any large scale IOT project uh, which requires uh, data upload you can basically reach out e quite easily. And now he goes on to tell us about a little bit about the earth, low earth orbit satellites um, anywhere up to even as close as 160 kilometers you can have and different layers of earth can wreak havoc on a signal over that distance. He is saying uh, anywhere between 400 to 700 kilometers anywhere even starting from even 150 kilometers upwards low earth orbiting satellites are possible and uh, there is uh, the need for long ranging signals should come no as no surprise even the satellites in the lowest of the low earth orbiting are still 160 kilometer. That means, you can start with low earth orbiting satellites how far are they minimum is 160 kilometers it can go up to 700 if not even up to 1000 kilometers and that 150 above 150 160 kilometers already the link cannot be all that great you can have conditions like rain and so on which are uh, which uh, really create a lot of problem. So, advancements have happened in the satellite space and uh, they are accelerating the possibilities. Essentially we are looking they are looking at uh, a constellation of uh, satellites which carry these uh, LoRa receivers and um, that will definitely be uh, it will lower the entry barrier for a satellite IOT a possibility with LoRa. So, folks you see LoRa definitely is the uh, link between satellite communication and your IOT uh, low power wide area network connection and essentially I think you must seriously look up uh, LoRa understand LoRa technology in de great detail. So, that the communication uh, in uh, low power wide area network is possible uh, in a successful manner. Before we move on to any further demonstration let us go and look up the swarm website. Look at this this is what the website says global affordable connectivity low cost two way global satellite co connectivity for IOT devices. You can join the swarm network and there are some nice pictures it has global coverage and uh, two way communication look at this picture. This is introducing you to the 400 dollar US dollar uh, kit. Uh, plus some 60 dollars for one year data. You can go buy this kit and essentially uh, it gives you global connectivity more accessible than ever send messages or GPS locations or create your own sensor suit that can transmit data from anywhere on the earth. Here are some products there is a swarm tile this is uh, designed to be an embedded onto an IOT device. The swarm tile is ideal for relaying sensor data and industrial IOT applications and uh, he shows you about the data plan and so on. So, uh, do look up this website it will tell you some interesting things and uh, there are a lot of applications listed here. For example, agriculture, maritime, energy, environmental, ground transportation big deal right. If you want to do ground transportation you must be able to uh, look at uh, several new things including connected car and so on right. So, all these things. So, please do spend time on reading up these articles swarm technologies and 
autonomic team uh, to create industry's first low cost ubiquitous vehicle connectivity platform look at the beautiful article that has is uh, out there. These are the new good things that are happening in the LoRa world. So, before we read these articles and uh, come up to speed uh, and uh, understand the uh, technology in great detail. There is also another company called Lacuna Space. Okay. Lacuna Space is another uh, website uh, like Swarm which talks about connecting sensors and uh, providing data for smart agriculture solutions to improve proper yield. Uh, you can see uh, proper yield. So, you can see they are also talking about LoRa, they are also talking about introducing these devices lowering the entry barrier for uh, application of uh, satellite technologies to IOTs. Okay. So, you can again look at wildlife tracking, remote monitoring and so many other fantastic applications uh, that they are looking up particularly when you do not have 5G or you do not have any terrestrial connectivity. This is the best that you can think of connecting it to uh, satellites and tracking assets uh, using uh, satellite data because you do not need much data there. You just want to know one reading right, and a very intermittent uh, reading. So, please do understand this in great detail. Let us see a little more into the data sheet of this particular one. So, let me uh, point you to this RN 2483 LoRa technology module command users reference guide. Okay. This is the module command reference users guide. This guide if you read it gives you a wealth of information, but let me point you directly to some important uh, parts in this which will help us to understand how this was configured. Basically the LoRa this manual can be looked up in the following way. All right. So, this is giving you uh, some pictures related to LoRa end device how you can connect microcontroller collect data from uh, the ADC port of the sensor and give it to RN2483 which basically will be like a LoRa transmitter. You connect over UART and then you transmit that uh, data that is one way. Another way is if you want to configure something in the RN2483 you can connect a PC uh, directly over UART because uh, these are ports which are freely available. You can also do your development work using this configuration that is connecting a laptop or a PC. Now, uh, the point here really is that data here is uh, completely encrypted. So, uh, please note that the uh, data is uh, cannot be intercepted so easily. Then you have a LoRa gateway which might accept the uh, data and then may de decrypt it and then take things uh, forward and uh, give it to application. For example, there can be a IP connection internet protocol connection and then giving it to an application server and then ultimately to an application. This is a definitely a possibility, but that is not really the point. The point is if you want to work with this chip there are three things you will have to configure properly. One is this picture is actually giving you a complete uh, relationship of the internal components of this RN2483. Okay, this is the command interface you what you see is its relationship to the modules internal components. Basically anything you want to do with the La LoRa WAN protocol will essentially be configuring the using the MAC commands. Anything you want to play around with the configuring the radio driver you do it with radio commands and anything you want to do with the system timer or GPIO or any of the hardware related things you use system commands. So, this whole manual into three sections MAC commands, radio commands and sys commands. So, uh, let us see what are the important MAC commands that uh, might be useful, but if I have to show you that you have to go back and see how we configured uh, the LoRa WAN 2483 module. What I will do is I will show you what are the parameters that were set. Okay. These were the parameters that were set. You can see obviously, the one MAC command that uh, they seem to have used which is very simple for you is the MAC pause. So, let us see what MAC pause actually does. Okay. So, MAC, so this is essentially the LoRa WAN protocol uh, command and uh, essentially these commands can be used to configure and control the LoRa WAN protocol. 
and not only that the radio driver and some system peripherals as well ok. So, that is really the point. So, let us see the mac pause command I mentioned to you about the uart, uart baud rate can be set and uh, let us now look at the command syntax. So, you have uh, essentially uh, the mac which is configuring the LoRa van then you have uh, the radio basically all the transceiver related things and then of course, the system related commands which are also some something very useful for for configuring the device. All right, so let us move on uh, here is uh, the one of the mac commands which is actually the mac save ok and then there are the system commands. The system commands are you can see here sleep reset erase fw factory reset set and get ok these are the main commands. It puts the system to sleep for a finite number of milliseconds that is that sleep then you have reset you have so many of these commands ok. Then uh, the detailed explanation of each one of these uh, system commands are out there then uh, going down you will also see some commands related to mac and one of the mac commands that we saw is related to mac pause. If you look at mac pause, pause is LoRa van stack functionality to allow transceiver configuration. If you want to configure the radio you have to do a pause essentially that is what it means and there are other commands that is reset, there is tx, join, save and so on. So, what we have used is the mac pause all right. Then uh, yeah if you want to look up mac pause you could definitely read it in detail ah, it is here. So, uh, this command pauses the LoRaWAN stack functionality to allow transceiver configuration through the use of mac pause radio commands can be generated between a LoRaWAN class A protocol uplink application and the LoRaWAN class A protocol receive windows ok between the uh, transmit and the receive windows. Uh, this command will reply with the time interval in milliseconds that the transceiver can be used without affecting the LoRa van functionality. The maximum value is there is returned whenever the LoRa van stack functionality is in idle um, state and the transceiver can be used without restrictions ok. So, 0 is returned when the LoRa van stack functionality can be paused. So, he gives you an example I would urge you to read this example so that uh, you can move on from there ok. Then yeah, there is also the other uh, part which is the radio part ok these are all mac commands we will not spend much time here because you always have access to this by downloading this uh, file and uh, it is anyway specific to the RN2483 right. So, it is important you read every part of it whichever chipset you buy you must look up the command uh, in great detail uh, reference manual in great detail ok. Then let us move on to radio the radio perhaps comes towards the end. So, I am just quickly yeah here you are here is the radio radio what are the commands you can do rx is this command configures the radio to receive simple radio packets according to prior configuration settings. tx is this command configures a simple radio packet transmission according to prior configuration. cw this command will put the module into a continuous wave uh, transmission for system tuning or certification. There is rx stop this command causes the radio to exit continuous receive mode. Then uh, you have set this command allows modification of the radio setting directly. Uh, this command allows for the user to change the method of radio operation within the module and then there is get this command grants the ability to read uh, read out radio settings as they are currently configured. So, folks essentially these are the different uh, commands their description in great detail and uh, now it will obviously be very useful for you to look up what all we have done here the radio set frequency that means you are setting the frequency of transmission 
then you are setting the radio set power of uh, some value which is 14 radio set uh, modem LoRa then we have done radio set spreading factor of 12 I will describe this separately then radio set bandwidth of 125 kilohertz and this is the payload that you want to transmit all right. So, you see so there are a bunch of uh, uh, Mac as well as radio commands that you see here radio set frequency radio set power which is set to 14 uh, radio set modulation is LoRa and uh, radio set uh, spreading factor is 12 we will handle that separately radio set bandwidth is 125 kilohertz radio set watchdog timer is 5000 milliseconds and uh, radio is in reception state which is uh, I think set to 0. So, essentially these are the commands and this is sufficient for uh, completing a communication between the LoRa transmitter and a LoRa receiver. All right, so now we will do something dramatic we will try to see if we can do a good demonstration of LoRa. Uh, this is mostly the efforts of the teaching assistants who wanted to give you a feel for how good LoRa can communicate with whatever we have in the lab. Okay. So, we are not attempting any satellite based things, but we are just trying to see within the campus. What we have for demonstration is a very simple thing think about this as the IISC campus think about this as the uh, IISC campus and this is our building. Okay. This is our building and we are all here. Now, on top of the building we have put the LoRa transmitter I will show you where exactly the LoRa transmitter is as the video starts and then uh, what you see here on this screen is essentially the screen related to uh, the fact that the radio transmit there is this number A12345 uh, transmit seems to be ok and then you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 some numbers it is transmitting that is basically the payload of what it is transmitting radio transmit ok this is what uh, is coming up from the modem from the modem there ok and uh, so let us see how we go about with this demonstration. If you look at this screen this screen essentially is the screen using LoRa transmitter which is mounted on top of the building and um, there is a simple laptop connected there and this screen essentially is shared from that from that the system they are using a software called AnyDesk. Please look up AnyDesk is a open source uh, software which can be used uh, and uh, you can share the laptop screen here. So, you see that a uh, lot of commands uh, the data payload you see in the main window on the right side you see uh, all the settings which I mentioned to you both the Mac level then the radio level and the other uh, commands all these three commands are out uh, here. So, essentially uh, those settings are there. So, let us start the demonstration now. So, as you can see now our uh, colleagues have climbed up the uh, uh, second floor plus uh, also gone up a little distance and they have installed the uh, LoRa transmitter out there and I can share the GPS coordinates of that uh, uh, system soon. Uh, you can see that the cable is going down and uh, for protecting it against um, you know uh, wind and uh, I mean rain and other related things uh, the modem electronics has been tied. Uh, tightly so that uh, it can be protected. Well, this is not the right way to do you need to uh, put it inside an IP 65 or an IP 66 box which I can show you separately. But anyway uh, this is for a quick demonstration so we decided to mount it there. Uh, now what we will do is uh, now that you know where the transmitter is at uh, quite some height uh, slightly higher than the uh, trees that you see. Uh, down there we will now see how far this signal can come you can see in this screen here on the right side uh, the communication seems to be ok till now ok because it says re radio transmit is ok and it appears to be the, the transmitter and the receiver is uh, seem to be ok. So, now let us see whether this transmitter that is mounted is working well and it is in good shape this is the so we are trying to see um, whether uh, the receiver is able to get the packet and also able to transmit back to the transmitter. Okay. So, essentially that is what is being attempted. So, 
let us see this screen here should also get updated now um, with uh, some data there you are you could see that uh, radio rx is ok I just flashed that message and it is continuously telling that the radio rx is ok. Now let us see what our colleagues are doing is they are going into the transmit window and um, also onto the receive window receiver side and uh, making the receiver ready ok. So, first they will make the receiver to be ready you can observe the command here the uh, receiver is ready and uh, once it is ready they will go to the transmit window and transmit a payload ok. Once the payload is transmitted that should be received on the receiver side window right. So, that is the payload 1 2 uh, that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 that is the payload and you can see that uh, the uh, transmit window which is on the left side you can see that on the right side the uh, receiver has got that uh, payload ok. Uh, there is some uh, discrepancy it is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 what it has received, but what you have transmitted is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 there is some discrepancy uh, which needs to be corrected ok. Uh, let us retransmit let us retransmit the data 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and uh, let us see whether we are able to receive that data ok first is to transmit that data. So, R x is ready ok and uh, yeah so now radio transmit is ok. Uh, so, we have transmitted 1 a 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and the receiver has received 1 a 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9. This uh, clearly indicates that uh, the communication is uh, decent enough even after we moved away from the tower and uh, we are not in line of sight and we are roughly uh, 400 meters uh, away from the uh, transmitter and still without line of sight it appears to be working well. Uh, the please note that the transmitter is at quite a height the receiver is at the ground level and uh, not at sea level of course, because uh, the city is really not at sea level uh, yet uh, you can say comparatively there is a height difference between the transmit and the a receiver. Now, this should uh, give you an highlight that LoRa is very promising uh, for uh, extremely low data rate, but extremely not only just extremely low data rate, but also uh, highly reliable communication. Now, you can see that um, we have changed an important setting radio set SF SF 7 has been mentioned and uh, that is said ok. Uh, on the uh, this is on the receiver side ok. The you should do the same thing on the transmitter side as well you are changing the spreading factor to a number called SF 7 and that SF 7 is being changed on the transmitter side now. So, let us do that change and uh, see if uh, the communication between the two uh, radios transmit and receive radio is successful with SF 7. You can see that the transmit side is also set to SF 7 here it says uh, radio set SF 7 ok that is fine. So, the transmit and receiver now are tuned to a spreading factor which has a number associated called the SF 7. Thank you very much.